today we check out the TS2 laser engraver from Two Trees. This is a 10 watt laser that potentially has all the gripes solved that I've spotted in other lasers. Let's get it out, check it out, and see how it works. Okay, this laser cutter comes as a monster in three separate boxes. I accepted this laser cutter for review expressly because it has a list of features that are just second to none. You guys know I'm a huge fan of laser cutters for making and DIY, and lately these 10 watt diode lasers coming on the scene have had some pretty tall promises. So really good instruction manual. Some materials to work with, just uh, looks like, it actually seems like vinyl. Some wood, yeah, standard stuff. As you guys know, I take packaging in these high dollar items pretty seriously, and this is packaged extremely well. Good form fitted laser cut uh, foam and no issues. It's actually very thick, it's double this thickness two of that one um, away from the outside of the case. So the odds of you getting into trouble and it hitting, like punching through, pretty low. Very cool, really well packaged. Everything is in its place. And really professionally done. I like the look of this. Oh, look at this. Check out the anodizing. Ah, manual Z-axis movement. Nice knob, ah, love it already. Very cool, I'm excited. Let's see if we can get everything out of all three boxes and lay it out and then we know what we're up against and we can start having a look at the manual. With everything out of the boxes, I'm gonna go ahead and lay things out in somewhat of a logical order and we'll start assembling. Quick inspection for any damages and I found none. This thing looks like it came through in fine shape. This threw me for a loop. Check out this extrusion. It actually dovetails together. This isn't a butt joint between these frames. You have to actually slide it into the dovetail. This is the same on both ends, making it extremely secure. I've never seen that on any CNC or any of my 3D printers or any of my lasers. Very cool, thumbs up. My kid is actually missing the correct Allen key for the M416s and not to worry, I had a driver. I've had this extrusion apart about three times because I had incorrect belt routing and I had the idler on the wrong side. Just a few rookie mistakes that probably could have been avoided if I had just taken a moment to look closer at the pictures. Uh, yeah, easy stuff though. One more little gotcha. Even with all the tension removed here, I still didn't have enough slack to get the belt over the idler. So when you run into something like this, just step back and think, what other way could I do it? In this case, I just removed the grub screws from the idler and then slid the frame forward, slid the idler on and tightened it all back up. And this, this belt is almost tensioned with all the tension removed, so they could leave a little bit more slack, but it's actually just fine. Okay, next little gotcha. When they have you check the frame for square, I also wanted to check the gantry that we had just installed. This can move due to the belts and the timing of the pulleys, but it also can move due to your mounting here, I found. And the best way I found to align this is to actually use the witness marks on the top here and just look down straight and line this bracket up with a number. In this case, we're at 50. 
and then go over to the far side and line it up on the same number and cinch the vertical bolts that come up through down. And that comes up with our perfectly square gantry when I check it and it's very repeatable. So that is how I squared the gantry to the frame. Any alignment problems with your gantry and frame are gonna result in incorrect dimensions on your final product. You'll get oblong circles or weird dimensionality that you don't want. The key is to take your time and get this square and this unit, holy smokes, is it well designed. This is one of the most robust frames I've seen yet. I like it. I, I see no reason that this would ever shift. You can, you could tweak this and bend it around and I, I don't think it's gonna deform. That's pretty cool. One more little gotcha you might run into. This screw is almost directly behind the laser head. I was able to get it by being really careful and using the short end of the Allen key, but it is a bit tricky. You might want to disassemble the laser head a little bit further to get that in, but I did get it there. drag chain instruction area isn't just the most clear so if you have troubles you can refer to this part of the video here they are super easy they just bolt down two bolts there two bolts there two bolts there two bolts under here and our limit switch is our mount and limit switch lines up with the gantry everything works that is quite elegant uh, the fact that it has drag chains at all is a huge selling point but having a good drag chain system that makes sense and is out of the way and there's no loads on it and I just love it. That is really, really cool. We just have to wire manage this when we're done, once we get it moving around and test it out, and that's about it. And this is what we end up with. What a sexy machine. This looks way better than some of the other ones on the market. Aesthetically, mechanically, and electrically. One small item before we take this out to the shop and get it, get it going. There's just a little bit of lash in these rollers here that we can take up. These are on eccentrics, just like any other 3D printer, and they include a wrench for you, so you can tighten these up. You just want to apply a little bit of pressure with the roller on the eccentric to the channel and just take this little bit of lash out of there, which is a very small amount compared to the per gear I tested. This is a pretty robust laser setup. I will mention though, I am a little concerned about the side rollers. The direction that they've oriented these is really good for keeping the gantry low and confined, just beautiful. But your bearings are loaded the wrong way. Our bearings are, are loaded a side load on them here on the channel, whereas this is designed to be vertical. I don't foresee it being a problem and they're adjusted beautifully. There's no lash in there. They did a wonderful job from the factory. You have something you wanna check on yours because if there's any lash in there, this can wander and pivot. Easy thing to fix, uh, may not be a long-term problem. There's very little weight on this gantry, but it is something worth noting. It's best I show you how I adjust these rollers on all 3D printers and these laser cutters. This roller was loose on here and you could feel so by the way it was rotating when not in, like no load on it and not in contact. That's the way it was when I started. All I do is use the eccentric and just take up the lash so that there's no movement in it anymore, no free play. You don't want any more than that. You don't want to load it into the channel. You just want to take up the lash. And the back side was the exact same way. This side I haven't adjusted yet. That wheel is free moving. Oh, interesting. They don't have eccentrics on both sides. The eccentric is on the outside only on this one. So we'll just give it a little bit of tension. And right there, that took it out. Nothing to it. And same with the back side. It's just a little bit slack. Quite a bit slack, actually. There, that's snug. Nothing to it. That'll take the lash out of our rollers and allow our gantry to track straight. Easy, easy.
If you end up with any rubber powder or shavings from these wheels or deposit on your extrusion here, you've got them, the idler's too tight and you need to back them off. There's too much preload and they're squishing into the channel and wearing. You don't want that, so keep an eye for that. Beauty, let's get this thing out to the workshop. These videos are made possible by my patrons and people like you clicking that thumbs up button. If you have a design that you don't want to laser cut yourself, check out PCBWay.com and their 50% off 8th anniversary sale on 3D printing and CNC machining. Check out their $5 PCBs when you're there. They offer many services and a really great job. Okay, out to the shop. We've got everything set up. Uh, before I came out, I did upgrade the firmware and adjusted the flame sensor to match the new firmware. It's just a digital output on the flame sensor, so I'm not sure what the firmware change is doing regarding that. But it means we can adjust the flame sensor wherever we need it to be. As well, I set it up on the Wi-Fi and I had no problems doing that. I, the app works fine to control it. I haven't tried to cut with it yet, but it does fully control it over my Wi-Fi network. No issues there. The app's much similar to the Xtool D1 app. Uh, pretty rudimentary. Access movement in Laser Gerbil, no problem. Cool thing with Laser Gerbil, it's open source. We're never going to get stuck with any proprietary anything. We're always going to be able to work with it which is a big selling point for me. This being a piece of scrap wood, we'll just go ahead and we'll do an engrave and see if our auto Z height works. And it does check that out. That is so cool. That's clicking the carve button, which just means engrave. And I hit go and laser gerbil, nothing to it. Lots of smoke off of this. My fan's doing a good job getting it out. There should be a video up on the channel uh, either now or sometime soon with this fan set up. Uh, completely 3D printed, works pretty good for pulling the smoke out of here. Just like that, we are done. That is a beautiful, beautiful engrave. I am super happy with that. Like one button press, no focusing, no nothing. Just straight out of the box, press the button, focused itself, done. One major gripe, no power switch. The only way to depower this is either pull the jack or press the e-stop. E-stop seems to be the way they kind of intend this to happen, but I don't much care for that. It's kind of annoying. Minor thing, I think they should add a power switch. Now I just tried to get the flame sensor to trip with a good old lighter right underneath it and I can't get it to trip, but I adjusted that myself. So it's just the analog pot on there, a potentiometer. And I set it about halfway. So I think we can go more sensitive on that. And I think I will. What I'll do is I'll just tune it. We'll keep turning it up until we get a point where we trip, but not too often that we trip erroneously from just the standard laser light. And a quick connect in the app we can control the laser just fine over the network. What I did is I set a static IP in my router for the laser. So every time it reconnects, it's always on the same IP and then I don't have to go looking for it on my network. And that worked really good. It's, there's no latency, it's working just fine. So their app is pretty cool. But the question is, can we actually get it to engrave something? Button down at the bottom is framing. And sure enough, the laser frames. I say we hit go. Upload error. Well, I can't actually get that to send to the printer. The app has crashed on my phone, so a little bit of a fail there. I'm gonna have to play with it a little bit more. I had high hopes for that. Hope they fix that up, because I do like the ability to just do quick labels and stuff from, from my phone, like a quick engrave on, say, a dog tag or something, or a label for a project. It's nice for text. Laser Gerbil is just awesome for pulling in any design. I hit vectorize on it, boom, we have an outline that we can cut. Really cool. All right, we're all set up. Let's focus our Z. Well, that's the cut two millimeter button. Perfect. And we just hit go.
absolutely lovely. One pass, no problems, punch out, no issues. That was a 200 millimeters a minute, and those are perfect cutouts. Actually, those are really great. Those are, those are rival my K40. Wow. So see how they're not, not black, they're more brown. I don't know whether that's coming through on the camera, but you want to go for a brown, um, deep, deep, dark brown, not, not pure singed black. This last one, there's an error in the vector eyes. That's an error in the file, not the laser. But that's a perfect cut through. I'm happy with that. Only one tiny spot right there didn't get it. And that's usually an indication that the glue was different in that area. Okay, I resized that file down a touch. Let's see if we can replicate our results. Just like that, we're done. Same results. Absolutely wonderful. Nice tight fit. These are really snug coming out. That means uh, we're dialed in pretty good. Wow, that's impressive. That's no air assist. So this has the tube for the air assist right here, included from factory with the valve. Line runs up through the gantry, through the drag chains, everything is just wonderful. And for those of you who have seen my other reviews of other lasers on this channel, you know I don't run a laser cutter without an air assist. The results just are never as good and you run more risks of fires and flare ups. This is downright impressive for no air assist. That I did not expect. So what do I think? This is a top tier laser for the price, no doubt about it. This thing is positioned to take some market share from the leaders without a doubt for a robust construction, full functionality, safety in that there's drag chains to keep the wiring from getting into the laser, easy to work with the Z, we can manipulate that ourselves without having to push on steppers and stuff. Just all around, impressive. I like the safety aspect here if you have little kids or whatever and they love to sneak into the room and look up over the table. Well this is supposedly laser safety glass. I wouldn't rely on it but as a line of defense yes. Cons. I'm not sure what's going on with the flame sensor. Really cool. I love the fact this is mandatory going forward. I love that they have a flame sensor but this one I'm gonna have to play with so we'll do a follow-up. See if we can get that working reliably. Shouldn't be a problem. No power switch. Very sad about that. That's a simple thing, easy thing. Documentation could have been a little bit better. The program, it's the, for updating firmware and setting up your Wi-Fi. Uh, defaults to Chinese on my PC, but I just use the Google, uh, just the Google app on my phone, not translate, just the app. And it overlays the English text, no problem. Super easy, it worked 100%. Would I shell out my hard-earned money for this laser? If I was buying it, absolutely. This is a contender if you're in the market for a mid-range laser cutter to the high end for a diode laser. That's something you're not going to have to do a lot of work on. I think this thing is a real candidate out there. You guys know I love my K40, but a K40 requires a lot of attention, a lot of tinkering, and a lot of mods. This laser from Two Trees, no mods, right out of the box. Add yourself an air assist pump or a T into your shop air like I've done on my K40. You've got videos on the channel on that. And your way to the races. Don't forget to click a thumbs up on your way out. Hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the other laser videos on my channel.